Hey, Stargazers, welcome back. My name is Nick. I'm a theaters manager at the Adler Planetarium, and you're watching Skywatch Weekly. Well, I hope you had a chance, maybe early this morning, to see some Perseid meteors. If you slept right through it, or perhaps you were just clouded out, that's all right. You'll have a chance over the next couple of weeks, if you're out there stargazing, a great chance to see some Perseids. Well, this week we're talking about a coming attraction of sorts in the sky, the red planet Mars. We've talked about Mars several times over the last few months, but it's finally just starting to be visible in the evening sky, at least at more reasonable hours. In fact, if you're out viewing the Perseids, you most likely saw Mars, as it's now well above the horizon by 11 p.m. or so here in Chicago. Mars is rising earlier and earlier every night, leading up to its closest approach to Earth for 2020 in early October. So why talk about it in August? Well, now is a great chance to get familiar with where it is in the sky, what it looks like, and to be able to watch it over the next couple of months and see how its location varies and also how much brighter it gets over that time. Sky watching is partially about seeing things for the first time, but as you get more familiar with the sky, one of the many joys comes from seeing how the sky changes, how the planets move and brighten, and the constellation you saw in the evening in April might be making a great appearance before dawn in August. So right now, around 10.30 tonight, Mars will be rising in the east, and it is bright. If you saw it in the morning sky a couple of months ago, you may be surprised just how bright it now appears. Easily brighter than Saturn, and by early October, it will be brighter than Jupiter is right now. Mars has a lovely reddish, orangish glow to it. That's due to the rusty, iron-rich soil reflecting sunlight. The red color is similar to the star Antares in Scorpius, which you might recall is the rival of Mars. That's what the name Antares means. This area of the sky that Mars is in right now is among some classic fall constellations, which we'll learn more about in future videos. Mars is currently in Pisces, a super dim constellation, and close to the slightly brighter Aries the Ram. Rising up above is the Square of Pegasus, a well-known fall asterism. But pretty much right now, if you're looking east a few hours after sunset, wondering what that bright red thing is, it's Mars. To the naked eye, it will appear as just a point of light. Don't believe anything that says otherwise. There was an exceptionally close opposition in 2003 that resulted in a hoax saying Mars would be as big as the full moon in the sky. That's certainly not true. Even at that very close approach, it was still almost 35 million miles away and nothing more than a point of light to the naked eye. Mars doesn't come around every year. Its oppositions are about 26 months apart. It's the next planet out from Earth, so the two planets get nice and close, but in between it simply takes a while for Earth to catch back up with Mars. Mars hasn't been this close since the summer of 2018, when it was closest in late July. This time around it will be higher in the sky, so if you have a telescope, give a look at Mars. With a telescope you should see a small disk and some darker and lighter smudges perhaps a bright smudge marking a polar ice cap, and if we get any bright clouds in the atmosphere, you can look for those too. In October, Mars will appear about 50% larger in the eyepiece than it does right now. But even then, I'll be honest, Mars tends to be more of a tantalizing view through telescopes, not quite the knock-your-socks-off view that Jupiter and Saturn provide. But it can be rewarding, and for those less telescope-inclined, Watching that orange-red planet rising in the east and getting brighter and brighter every night, that's satisfying as well. We also have some spacecraft on the way to Mars. The NASA Perseverance rover launched on July 30th. There's also an orbiter on the way from the United Arab Emirates, and a combination orbiter, lander, and rover launched by China. Years with a Mars opposition are the most fuel-efficient time to send spacecraft to Mars, so it's no coincidence that all three of these launched in July and will arrive at Mars in February of 2021. So, an exciting time at Mars, with a great view from Earth over the next few months, and even better close-up views from spacecraft early next year. 
My challenge for you, try to catch Mars as soon as you can, before it gets super obvious in the evening sky. Right now it's up a little bit later, but worth catching as it rises in the east. I do want to check back in with another planet, Jupiter. In the video on July 8th, we talked about how its moons often cast shadows on the cloud tops, and these solar eclipses on Jupiter are visible with telescopes. Well, we're getting two shadows at once this week. A double shadow transit will be visible on Friday night into Saturday morning. The shadows of the moons Io and Ganymede will be visible on the cloud tops from just after 11 p.m. to just before 1 a.m. that night here in Chicago. This will be visible across North America as well, so just adjust for your time zone as needed. A couple of morning views to see this week as well. The moon right now just past third quarter, so a great chance to see a thin crescent near the star Aldebaran, the Eye of Taurus, tomorrow morning, August 13th. And two mornings later on Saturday, Venus and the Moon will appear quite close together in the feet of the Gemini Twins. Also rising at this hour, good old Orion. He'll be a morning view for the next few months, and as we get into the late fall, he'll be up earlier and earlier, and eventually an evening view as we get into the winter. So, a cool view right now, not only of the moon's movements in the sky, but also a reappearance of our friends from the winter sky, now well positioned for viewing about 90 minutes before sunrise. So that's what we have for you this week. As always, thank you for watching. Make sure you click on that subscribe button to be up to date on all things Adler. And of course, follow the Adler on social media as well. Thanks for watching, and we'll see you next week.